how did the Flyers get this far, right? You go back to uh, halfway through the season, <laughs> they're three and five. And I can remember after the after the, the loss to to Arizona, uh, I was in the press box and, and Grant was sitting next to me and we're starting to pack up to go down for the press conferences. And he's like, so what's, what do you think? And I said, I think they're done. I, I don't think this uh, this team just doesn't have it this year. And uh, look what they've done. They went from three and five to, to win – they, they've only lost two games since then, and, and here we are, you know, heading to the to Los Angeles, down to your neck of the woods on Sunday for the uh, for the NFC Championship game. I mean, what are some of the things for you that that really kind of stand out as far as how they were able to get to this point? Yeah, there's some there's some big things, and I think even you know people mentioned the three and five, but that coming out of the bye and losing to Indy mm-hmm. was that their fifth loss, or was that I, I think yeah. they had one one and then they. That was their fourth loss. So they fourth loss. Yeah, that was their fourth loss in a row. Okay. Yeah. So and then were they two and four at that time, or were they? Was that already three and five? Uh, well, heck, now you, you got me going back. Yeah, and forth. I need to look up that up because I remember distinctively, distinctively thinking after that loss, this team, uh-huh. this team wasn't going to be able to win. No, they were two and four after Indy, and then they went to Chicago and they won that game. And then it seemed like okay, because they were at that point they that that went against Chicago got them to three and four, and then you had Arizona coming in, and Arizona was all beat up, and so it was like okay, they're gonna get the five hundred now, right? And then they lose, yeah. and instead of being a five hundred at at, uh, at four and four, they're three and five, and it just gotcha. felt yeah. Look, so the biggest things for me right off the bat, I, I mean, there was a lot of changes on offense, but to me. Um, D'Amico Ryans came into his own. I think that he's shown that he's leaps and bounds above and like as far as what he's been able to do as a defensive coordinator. And once again, I like coming on your show and patting myself on the back because I was very <laughs> high on D'Amico Ryans. You know, we talked about Ambry Thomas last week. D'Amico mm-hmm. Ryans was somebody else that I was extremely high on, even though people were like, oh, like, you know, he's a first year defensive coordinator he's not as good as Robert Sala he's not going to be you know all this kind of stuff and I knew his background as being the mic'd up uh, linebacker middle linebacker for some great defenses in Houston and for the Eagles that that mindset and that ability to read and um, call plays on defense was going to you know bode well for him as a defensive coordinator and that it's so great to see week three I think against Green Bay where they lost was his worst game, I think, as a defensive coordinator. To see full circle what has happened um, this last game, divisional playoff game and see what a great game he's been able to call, how much he was able to shut down Aaron Rodgers and that Green Bay uh, high-octane high offense at home, especially with how they came out that first drive, to me shows how good he's gotten at adjustments. You saw that he started doing that double team on Devontae Adams, which changed things up. And then his ability to really just work with the type of just mismatch he's had to do in the secondary and still not make that just a huge blunder as we've seen in previous years. To me, him coming into his own is one of the biggest uh, changes that I think, and you've mentioned it, how well those defensive stats have been as far as holding uh, offenses to underneath their averages and what he's done against some really good quarterbacks, some really great offenses, and they haven't looked very great against the 49ers. So that was one of the biggest changes that I think it has, has led to this uh, winning streak. Yeah, and, and I'm with you on that one because that's that that's d- really the direction that I took it because, you know, I, I, I'm on Twitter and I talk a lot about Jimmy Garoppolo because I, I – I, I feel like he's he's underappreciated for what he does for the 49ers. But when it comes to why are the 49ers in the in the NFC Championship game, how did they get this far? Hey, it's it's I wrote this up today. I just I just posted on on at the at the Press Democrat, but like Paul Bear Bryant once said, defenses win championships, right? And, and if if you don't believe that that's the case in 2021, now 2022, all you got to do is watch what the 49ers have done over the second half of the year. Mm-hmm. They they had the issue with D Ford, and, and somebody tweeted this out last night, kind of about, hey, imagine how good the Fournier's defense would be right now if they still had D Ford. And, and my response to that is, I don't think they'd be the defense they are, because the injury to D Ford, along with losing uh, Javon Kinlaw, really forced D'Amico Ryan's and Chris Kasarek and the Fournier's defensive staff to rearrange, and they it forced them to completely redo their rotation, and. 
it forced him to put Eric Armstead inside it. It forced him to start using Samson Ebicom as a, in the starting role. DJ Jones stepped up. Eric Armstead's gotten better. Nick Bosa's always been the same guy, but it really made that defensive front and that entire rotation is so deep and so good. I mean, you're getting Arden Key with big, big plays. Charles Amena, who, uh, you know, we talked about Jordan Willis and the, what the production they've gotten out of him in the second half of this season. It all starts with that that defensive front. So uh, those guys have been playing so good, and that goes to the defensive staff and D'Amico Ryan's, like you said. Fred Warner. Fred Warner was an all-pro last year, and he's had a better season this year. He had mm-hmm. a little bit of a rough start, but he actually has more tackles this year than he did last year as an all-pro. He has the same number of, of tackles for loss as he did uh, – in 2019, tying his career high. The only reason he didn't end up winning the All-Pro this year, I think, is because he didn't have the turnovers. But he's he's still that stud inside linebacker the 49ers need. He makes the two guy whoever lines up next to him better. And then on the on the backside, you have Dukowski Tart back this year. And when you put him back there with um, with Ward with, with Jimmy Ward, you have two veterans that can do a multiple things and work well together. And then you also have Emmanuel Mosley on, on one side and he locks down half the field. And so mm-hmm. Mosley's ability to kind of lock down his side allows the safeties to help out with Ambry Thomas or last week, this week, Dante Johnson or whoever. And it's, it's from the front to the middle, to the back, the way the, the coordinator runs this thing that this defense is, is, is this plays lights out. At least I feel like they do. Uh, even when they screw up, they, they figure it out like they did against the Rams and they make the adjustments and they come back and they, they stop it. And so that's the biggest one. And then the second one, and you already hit on it with our game ball, Debo Samuel. And what mm-hmm. they did with Debo Samuel on the offensive side of the ball, that just turned everything around on their offensive side because it gave him more explosiveness. Um, he's an explosive player as a wide receiver, but getting the ball into his hands in all the different ways that they can now and moving him around the formation opens up things for George Kittle and, and everybody else. So, Defense, though, is the main one for me with how the 49ers are here in the NFC Championship game. And, you know, you got to give kudos to the, you know, John Lynch and the and the draft that they had and just the offseason additions that they had because, um, you know, the depth on the defensive line, um, you know, uh, last year Jordan Willis was like a midseason get. You know, they gave a sixth-round draft pick to get him. This year, I think – is his last name pronounced Amenu? Amenu? Yeah, Omenahu. Okay, Omenahu. Um, you know, another, you know, midseason draft pick that people are like, why are we getting another defensive lineman? And you've seen he's made some big impact, impactful plays and keeping that rotation on the defensive line going. Samson Ebicom has started to, to, to show flares as well. And then bringing in a guy like Ambry Thomas, who's starting to show, you know, some, some pros, prosper here. And him and Mosley look like they're going to be a very, very good, um, you know, cornerback tandem moving forward and the stalwarts for that uh, 49ers defense moving forward, um, you know, for years to come, which is, which is great to see. And I think just the way that they built this team from top down, especially this defense, I think has played a big role. And now that everybody's kind of knows what their role is, everybody's kind of all the rust has gone off their cohesive unit, everybody's back and relatively healthy. I think you're seeing the, 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 the fruits of all of that, those seeds that were sown through through their drafting as well as you know their offseason additions i think is really shown big time why the 49ers have made that turnaround yeah those those were 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 uh, pickups that uh, 49ers gave up very little for and they were able to get quite a bit of return for both of those guys and mm-hmm. and it'll you know they're going to have willis and amena who and for sure i know they have amena who under contract for next year as well so uh it's it's positive for down the road and they like like you said i think the the draft pick they gave up to get willis uh, was actually in in this year's draft so they've been getting all this production without even having to to lose the pick yet it was a mm-hmm. 2022 draft pick that they they gave up and they they picked up willis plus a seventh rounder so not not too bad uh, one, then be- one, one other thing before we move on i think offensive side as well that offensive line i think has stepped up especially Alex Mack. I know we talked uh, we talked about it a little last week, but I think Alex Mack was really struggling in the first half of the season, especially why they were losing a lot because that running game couldn't get off and he was just looking old week after week and I think something changed where he got his win back or he fig- he just, you know, started pull- put his big boy uh underwear on and all of a sudden turned into the Alex Mack that we all hoped that he could be. And I think that was really done dividends as far as how this offense and this running rushing attack 
has been able to, you know, really carry the offense moving forward in this win streak as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point there as well. And then I, I know 